I'm calling this segment, Do It Different. Right? This is not that I'm doing it better or worse. It's just different. That's it. You have a smart home and you have three different modes, right? You have a mode for when guests are over. You have a mode for when, let's say, it's evening time and you want to wind things down. And let's say you have like a study or a work mode. Now, without getting into too much details, let's just assume that the things that they perform aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. As your smart home starts to evolve and gets bigger, uh, the things that the particular modes do start to intersect. And then the question becomes, well, then which mode gets priority? How do you rectify that? Do you even know that they are in conflict? And that's just lights. There could be many other things that your modes may do that you may not realize conflict. Here's an example so it makes sense. You have your house and you have three different modes, right? Night, guest, and study. And then here are some of the devices that they can control respective to each of those particular modes. So let's say you have a night mode and then you have it have these particular things that it controls. So it has like mode P or it does P thing for the lights, it does S thing for buttons, it has like an O thing for like the temperature and then so on and so forth, it can just go on and on. When you have that option selected, that's what these get set to. But then you have guest mode and then these are the things that it can do as well. And I randomize all of these uh, letters so that way there's no correlation to let's say the previous thing. As you can probably tell that if you have options where it's nighttime but also you have guests over and these are options that can exist at both at the same time, then you have conflicts, right? Like they're not the same, like they all are in different states. So which one gets priority? And this gets more messy as you add more things. So you have study modes and you can just go on forever and have different things. So what do you do instead? I personally use selects. I've seen this type of issue before when writing code and you have to write, let's say, large scale websites and certain things within the websites can happen at different points in time. This gets really hard to track when all these things can happen simultaneously. It's much better to scope it all down into like a finite state machine. Then things become way easier as you scale up. Okay, fancy words, what does that mean? You treat it as a finite state machine, then only one of these things can be true at one time. It is either in night mode, it's either in guest mode or either in study mode. They do not overlap. They can't all be the same thing at the same time. So that means as we're in night mode, then of course all of that is, exists and that's fine. But then if we have guest over, then you're in guest mode and only those things exist at that time. Same thing if you go into study mode. These three things will not overlap or they can't overlap because you can only assume one state. Now, the next logical question is, you can be in more than one state at a time. So a person can have, let's say, a guest over and it be night mode as well. Like those two things can exist at the same time. And that is correct. But it doesn't have to. Stay with me. Think about how all of this came into be. Like you have this system, you're creating it, like you're creating this as you go along. You don't create all of this stuff like as a big bang and it all happens all at once. You step through it one at a time. So you may start with night mode. With night mode, you will set all of the states for the lights, the buttons, the thermostats, and whatever else you may have. And this is the only state that you can be in. Then you're like, you know what? This works well, but you know what? I have, I have an issue. When guests are over and it's nighttime, I'm having some problems. There's some inconsistencies that I'm seeing between, let's say, my lights and the thermostats. So I now create guest mode. Again, you still have the lights, buttons, and thermostats, but you have this new state that you're considering. And this is the only state that it will be in because you're not in night mode, you're in guest mode. And guest mode would have conditions inside to say that, you know, after a certain time, the lights should do this. After a certain time, the lights should do, the button should do that. Same thing for the thermostat. Like it would account for whatever night mode was missing and for whatever else you need guest mode to to take care of. Same thing for when you're in study mode. And maybe there are some things that you don't need to take into account. Like for instance, it's question mark. We don't care about the thermostat when we're in study mode, so we may not do anything for that and that's fine too. This format forces you to look at your experience as a whole, not just in discrete parts, but as a whole and to say, while I'm in this mode, what does this, what does my experience look like 
as a whole across the entire system, across all of my automations, what does it look like? In one of my previous videos, this came up because I was mentioning that my automation only kicks in when the house is in guest mode. The ambient bathroom music automation can use these states to know when to fire. In this case, if my home goes into guest mode, the automation would fire, otherwise it'll just behave normally. This and you guys saw the drop down in the different states, and I briefly talked about it, but I didn't go into depth. But then a lot of you had questions about it and was wondering, how does this differ over just having, let's say, binary states that you can toggle on and off and have it run simultaneously together. So let me show you some other examples as to how I use this select drop down and managing, let's say, the different modes of my house. So I have here when the house mode is in sleep, I turn off the lights in the living room, both the ambient ones and the living room lights. If anywhere else I have a house mode being something different and it touches these lights, they won't conflict because they can only assume one state at a time. This one is a little bit more complex. I have houses in active mode, sleep mode, protected mode, right? There's these three modes, but this is controlling the alarms in a different state. So when it's an active state, it's gonna just disarm the alarm. We have sleep mode, which will basically set the alarm to indoors. And then you have protected mode, which will set it to when it's away. Watch, I'm gonna set this from active mode and I'm gonna put it to, let's say sleep mode, sleep. And what's cool about this is that this kind of works in reverse. So if it sees that I've disarmed the alarm, then it's going to set the house to active mode. Disarmed. There you go. Does this work perfectly? No. Uh, but it does get me about 90% of the way there. There are times when just the, having that broad mode isn't good enough and I need more fine grain control due to, let's say, particular edge cases. Then in those instances, I may create like an additional button or some kind of binary switch that I may add onto it. So that way I can turn things off and on as needed to control just those edge cases. If I didn't do it this way, if I had to do it the other way around, then what would happen is that instead of having just the one selected drop down with the small number of selections in between or modes, I would have a ton of helper methods that control a lot of different things. And then you're going to have to go through each automation and try to hunt them down and see what is doing what. It just becomes a lot to look into and very difficult to maintain. And this is one of those things where it doesn't start off this way. Like you may disagree with me and that's fine. That's fine. I've been doing this for a long time in terms of just development and coding. So I know that code never stays simple. It always grows over time. It always becomes more complex, more things come up and being able to identify what things do at scale, kind of one of the things that we have to learn to do. And this is one of those things where from experience, I know just doesn't work at scale. It just gets out of control and then you end up having spaghetti code or in this case, spaghetti automations that does things and you're like, I didn't, like, I don't know. Like, I thought it was just gonna turn off the lights and now all of a sudden I have intruders into my house. But like I said, it's not that the other way is wrong. It's just that this is just a different way to do it.